Hey YouTube, I just wanted to show you a design that I came up with to make a siphon coffee maker uh, out of mason jars. Um, the purpose of the this project really was to create a siphon coffee maker with very little, uh, very little parts or maybe parts that you can find around the house uh, and um, make it economical right and kind of have a conversational piece which I thought was pretty cool. So what we have here is a standard mason jar uh, with the standard uh, width as far as uh, that's concerned. I have another jar here that you probably could tell you can see that I've cut the bottom off. Uh, this is rather challenging to be honest with you. I know that a lot of times uh, in YouTube videos people don't really explain the mistakes that they've gone through and I think that uh, Personally, I think it's a mistake. I think people should express that so that you know folks are not discouraged when they're creating a design or creating a product. Basically, what's happened here is um, I've taken, uh, I've in the process of me trying to chop, cut off the bottom of the mason jar, I cut off or I broke approximately three or four jars in the process, um, and I found this one method to be the best of them all, and uh, and so basically want to share that with you. You can see it's not perfect. <laughs> It's not a perfect circular cut. I know a lot of folks have had success doing this. Uh, I personally have not. I'm not sure if it's the shape of the jar or if I didn't scour the line enough. Basically what I've done is taken the mason jar, taken a diamond cutter here, and I've scoured the bottom of the jar as so. So I've used kind of, a, you know, I basically use this um, frog tape roll uh, to give me the, the standard height um, or the standard depth of the cut and went around the jar as such scoured the bottom of the jar and then I dipped the jar in out alternating uh, uh, bats of water a different temperature gauge so I had 170 degree temperature water on one end and I had about 45 degree water on the, end, on the other and I altered uh, putting the jar in between in each each um, you know basically um, uh, water component um, in each water bath did so created uh, some stress on the actual scour line and then shattered the bottom part of the the jar it took me a good four to five uh, alternate roll or alternate turns between both of the the baths to um, to get that to to come off and so uh, that was um, took some time but I was able to do this and you could see it wasn't perfect Although I kind of like the fact that I have somewhat of a, a flange here. I think it gives it a little character. That's just me. Probably some uh, um, self-praise there. But uh, that's just, just me. I like the, the design of that. Uh, so again, I have a standard jar. Then I have another jar with the bottom cut off. I kind of explained how I did that. There are plenty of YouTube videos on that. And what I have here is pretty much the, the heart and soul of this design. Very simple. I think uh, it's pretty... Uh, uh, I'm pretty you know, pleased with the design. Basically what I've done is I've taken a cork from a wine bottle and I pierced it through between two back-to-back -back lids and how I did that was I took the lid as you can see here and I cut a star pattern or almost a kind of a snowflake pattern uh, on the lid. So I took a cutting tool with my Dremel and I cut like so back forth and such and then that created basically these triangular shapes you can see here and I bent them in ever so slightly now the the width or the diameter of that of those uh, those cuts were slightly smaller than the cork itself so that I could pressure push the cork through and have a nice seal around the rim uh, the reason why that's important if you're familiar with siphon coffee makers is you need to have a, a, a nice seal to have that vacuum uh, effect uh, when you're creating the um, or when you're making your coffee so I did the same thing on the other side as well as you can see here again pushed it through um, pushed the cork on the other side place these back to back they're not connected in any way I kind of like that because it gives me the flexibility to unscrew and screw either of the jars uh, when I'm making the coffee and you'll see why that's important later um, and then what I did was I took various drill bits and I, and I drilled, uh, basically the, 
uh, a hole through the cork on through this each all the way through okay and I did that um, let me see if I can get that here on the camera you can see the light going through there and I did that obviously so that I could put this copper pipe through both of these leads lids and so that helps me have a, a, a basically a, a vehicle to to uh, pass the water from one jar onto the next as pressure built. So how this is put together basically is uh, I have the main jar. This is where water, you place water into here. Usually you fill it up to about such, right? And then I have this jar, and this is where the coffee grinds are gonna be in. Uh, the coffee grinds are going to be in and what I've done there is I've taken another lid as you can see here and I've pierced all of these holes through here uh, and how this basically connects is I put the, the lid in the coffee filter as such I'll show you how I put it together and I'll show you why I did this and then I put this through here to the other side and then I basically bend this outwards as so. As you can imagine. So what I like to do is I like to kind of separate the those um, accumulated areas of paper so that you don't have one concentrated area which can create somewhat of a, a leak, right? And and such and now it's ready to be attached to the other remaining part and, okay like so and so you can see in here you can see in there that the coffee filter is uh, on top and flanges out here on the outer side so it's completely covered now the reason why that was important is because uh, as the vacuum kicks in, the bottom chamber will suck the liquid from the top chamber into the bottom chamber. And doing so, if I did not have the filter in place, or if I did not have that uh, this metal perforated disc in place to create some structure, I basically would have a filter over the small tiny hole, and that would... Uh, there's so much concentrated force in that small area that it basically would just uh, puncture the the filter and I would have grinds in the bottom chamber. So this allows me to to uh, filter or create some structure uh, prior to reaching the actual hole and the only thing going on that pipe at that point in time is the actual brewed coffee. So again, wrap the filter as such to the disc, pop it in the bottom, Clean that out. As such. All right. And then attach this to the coffee maker. At this point in time, your siphon coffee maker is ready to go. You have water in the bottom chamber. You put your coffee grinds on the top and you put this over um, a medium, I'm sorry, a low flame. Uh, I do want to preface this with saying that uh, there are various articles and uh, I've done various research on the internet to determine if it was safe to put the mason jar over heat. Um, what I've seen is that it is safe in an oven uh, for mason jars, uh, although there are uh, stipulations that they could, you know, they could shatter. Um, it is safe to boil, obviously, because they're made for canning. But I have this under direct flame, and that's why I use a very low, low, uh, low flame. I've brewed coffee here at least a good twenty times, and it has not shattered. It does not mean that it won't happen to you. Uh, but from I feel rather, rather comfortable myself. But that is a disclaimer here. Uh, you know, do this at your own risk. Although I think it's rather, again, rather safe. And again, the coffee coffee comes out pretty awesome. Uh, to, to say that I, you know, I, I do brew different types of coffee from pour overs to French presses to to arrow presses, uh, yeah, espresso machine, whatnot. But um, but this is one of my favorites. I think more because of the dramatic effect that you have with this, as the water 
um, uh, it uh, leaves the bottom chamber as steam builds up, it presses the water down, goes up the tube into the secondary chamber, and you'll have water and grinds kind of swirling around. You take a nice little uh, wooden spoon and uh, mix it in there, and then let it um, uh, you turn off the heat at that point. Once the water uh, rises to the top, you turn off the heat, and it'll suction back down to the bottom, at which point in time you'll have your brewed coffee. So what, I'm, what I want to do is, um, and this is the, the, the first part of the video, what I like to do is then further enhance um, the design by putting or by making uh, a handle on here. And how I plan to do that is basically getting these two hose clamps here. Um, and uh, let's see here. And That's going to be the secondary video, if you would. And the idea is to have these holes clamps here. Take this pipe and uh, basically hammer it down to have a flat edge that will tuck underneath the hose clamp, wrap around the hose clamp, and come out and about. And on that handle, I'll have some cork as well so that it protects my hands from getting burned when I'm removing it from the flame from the fire as it does get pretty hot. Keep in mind that any any variances in temperature from hot to cold will crack your glass. So if you have a wet towel that is rather cold uh, or wet hands and you try to reach to grab this, it, there is a potential for cracking because of the shock variance. And that is true with any glassware that you have. Um, but uh, keep that in mind. Other than that, uh, I think it's a rather successful design. It does not leak. It seems to be very, um, very successful. And uh, let me know what you think. Thank you much.